President Trump is not backing down from his feud with the United States Postal Service. He's now installing a well-known loyalist to enact his vision. Louis DeJoy will take over the agency in mid-June. DeJoy is a fundraiser for the Republican National Convention. He'll take over at a time when the Postal Service is negotiating with the Treasury Department for $10 billion in coronavirus-related aid. I want to bring in Lisa Ryan. She covers federal agencies and the Trump administration for The Washington Post. So, Lisa, what changes does the president want to make in the post office? And, and why is DeJoy his pick to act out this plan? Hi, Rena. Well, the Postal Service has said that the Board of Governors did an extensive search to replace the outgoing Postmaster General, Megan Brennan, who had come up through the ranks. Uh, and Mr. DeJoy would be the first uh, Postmaster General in 20 years um, to, to be an outsider. And uh, he's a former um, uh, businessman who uh, owned a logistics supply company. And he his um, company was actually a client of the Postal Service uh, way back when. As you said he's a, a big fundraiser. He's given more than $2 million uh, since 2016 to Trump, um, uh, to President Trump and to Republican candidates. So uh, the Treasury Secretary uh, acting uh, on the president's behalf um, had a big hand in this appointment. What Trump really wants a structural change to the Postal Service, which he has long complained, you know, is losing money and should not get a bailout. But uh, his primary beef is really with Amazon. Uh, the owner of Amazon is Jeff Bezos, who also owns The Washington Post. President Trump does not like the way The Post has covered his administration and has complained many times, both publicly and fumed privately to his aides, uh, you know, that he that he doesn't like um, our coverage and, and thus doesn't like Bezos. And his biggest issue is that the Postal Service should be charging Amazon and other e-commerce companies more for package deliveries. Mm. You know, Lisa, we've got lawmakers on both sides who have also been critical of the U.S. postal system. How are their complaints different from what the president is putting out right now? So you have Democrats who actually um, are kind of using this moment of the pandemic uh, where the Postal Service, uh, by the way, I should say, you know, says it has lost, um, you know, a third of the volume um, uh, of, uh, of, you know, deliveries that it, it had beforehand. And for years, the Postal Service has been struggling financially to kind of embrace the digital age as people are just mailing so many fewer, um, fewer letters and cards. Uh, package delivery has really been a bright spot. So in Congress, what you've had is a real reluctance to take this issue on because, uh, you know, you have rural Republicans who represent areas, uh, you know, where constituents who really rely on the Postal Service for, you know, deliveries of packages, prescriptions. And you've got Democrats who are um, who have generous donations, you know, cut campaign donations from postal unions. And this is a very, very strong uh, union workforce. So Democrats really would like to um, have a direct, you know, bailout. And in the next stimulus package, uh, they are really talking about, you know, giving the Postal Service as much as $25 billion uh, in direct funding. But what we've also got is this $10 million loan a line of credit that for the first time, this was passed in the previous stimulus bill, for the first time this would attach terms uh, that would require restructuring. And Lisa, how are Postal Service employees and companies like Amazon, as you mentioned, reacting to the president's push? Well, uh, uh, Amazon, as well as eBay and a number of other big, big e-retailers, uh, uh, has linked arms with the package industry, and they have um, written letters, and they've now got a big, um, you know, television ad running that says "Save the Postal Service," because, especially if you talk about Amazon, you know, its finances are very intertwined with the Postal Service's. Um, you know, Amazon, the Postal Service delivers many, many packages packages for Amazon, as well as for um, United Parcel Service and FedEx, uh, particularly in what we call the last mile of delivery, where these companies, it's not, um, you know, it, they don't make money by going to very rural areas. The Postal Service is already going to these areas. So it makes sense for them to, um, to hire the Postal Service to deliver their packages. You asked about the employees. Well, 
Um, the unions, uh, you know, I think are suspicious of Mr. DeJoy just because they, they realize that he's being installed to make structural changes that really could involve, um, involve cuts to the labor force. Um, but, you know, this is a very strong union workforce. So it, it's really, it would not be easy to just break the unions. Um, so we'll really, we'll really have to see, see what happens and what, um, what inroads the Treasury Department um, on behalf of President Trump can make in restructuring. All right, we'll be watching a service that affects so many people across this country. Lisa Ryan, thank you very much with The Washington Post. Thank you for having me.